We're so glad to have all of you in our service tonight. It's going to be a little different from a normal service. I can't remember <clears throat> when we had a ventriloquist last. In fact, I don't, have we ever had a ventriloquist? But we have one tonight, and we're so grateful. As children of God, there are many, many things that indicate that there's a great deal of joy and happiness in serving Jesus. I know that there are places in the world and churches in the world that would say a ventriloquist in the pulpit, but not here. We believe that a ventriloquist has just as much place in the pulpit as the pastor does. The main thing is that we're Christians and that we're sharing our Christian experience and sharing our Christian joy with one another. And so tonight we're going to enjoy the presentation by Brother Bob Walsh as he comes. I'll ask Chaplain Taylor in a few moments to come and give him a better introduction than I can because I have just met this young man. I say young because he's younger than I am. He's older than some of you, but uh, he's younger than I am. But we are good, glad to have uh, Chaplain Taylor with us also from the uh, Fenwick Pier and with our U.S. servicemen's work here in Hong Kong. We also welcome some other servicemen. I know there are two here. Would you stand and let the people see you? Are there any other servicemen here this morning. I mean, this, uh, tonight. You know, I, I'm really confused, am I not? All right, thank you for standing. And we have one other visitor with us tonight, and your name is John Bruno. He's also here with Brother Walsh, I believe. We're glad to have him in our service as well. Let's spend a moment or two in prayer now, thanking God for his goodness and his mercy, and asking his blessings on the service tonight and on those things that we'll be involved in in the days that lie just ahead. Does someone have a testimony that you just have to share at the moment? Something on your heart, something on your mind that you want to share with this group before we pray? All right, listen. Um, I'd just like to say uh, farewell to you all. This is my last service. And in way of testimony, I want to say that the two years that we've had in Hong Kong have been absolutely superb um, with this church. Um, when, I, when I arrived, I didn't like Hong Kong at all. <laughs> and in many ways, I still don't like it as an environment for myself and for my children. But I want to say to the glory of God that it's been absolutely tremendous spiritually. And um, the most significant thing that happened was that after 17 years, the Lord healed me from depression. And I'm just really thrilled. And uh, this started quite soon after we arrived. And it was quite plain within about six months that the worst was over in that for me. And I'm just so thankful. The Lord gave me a verse in 1 Thessalonians. Um, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. It's become a very precious verse for me. And I'd like to encourage you all with it. And I'd like to say goodbye and God bless you. Thank you very much for being such a wonderful church for you and myself. Thank you, Lissa. Some of you know that Hugh left a few days ago to arrange housing for the family. Lissa will leave with the children <clears throat> Tuesday evening. They're being posted back to England. Hugh will be back with us for just a few days, and then he will be going back to join his family once again. Uh, thank you, Lissa, for sharing with us tonight. They've been a blessing to us. We pray God has used our church as a real blessing in their lives as well. I want us to go to the Lord in prayer now as we thank him for his goodness and mercy, and especially as we consider this week, Holy Week. This morning we thought together about what it means to know the life that Jesus died to buy for us on the cross, and to know it in its full and meaningful sense in our lives. Throughout this week, our thoughts and our hearts will turn many, many times to that week almost 2,000 years ago when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem in triumph, was crucified on Friday, and rose from the grave on that first Easter Sunday morning. On Friday of this week, we will have a Good Friday service at 12 noon. We hope that many of you will be with us in the service. It will be a service made almost totally of scripture and music. Uh, I will not preach, so you plan to be with us on Friday for the Good, Good Friday service. I think you'll find it a very meaningful service as we share together the crucifixion and the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And then on Sunday morning, we will be having our Christmas cantata, presenting it twice, first at the Academic Community Church at Baptist College. What did I say funny? Our Easter cantata. Our Easter cantata. <clears throat> we will present it twice, first at uh, the Academic Church at Baptist College, and then coming immediately here to our Cowlin Baptist Church for the second presentation. Uh, I really didn't drink anything before I came tonight. <laughs> no, that's not true either. I did drink a glass of orange juice. You'll forgive me for the stupid mistakes I'm making. But we do feel that this is going to be a very meaningful week in our lives. Wednesday evening, we also have our regular prayer service. Uh, one of the two young men that stood a moment ago has asked that I baptize him. Uh, they have been on board ship now for a couple of months. They will not return to Hawaii until July, and he would like to follow the Lord in baptism before that much time takes place. So if you're here Wednesday evening, you'll be able to observe his baptism in our Cowlin Baptist Church, and we'll present him with a baptism certificate, which he'll be able to take back to the Baptist Church he attends in Hawaii and present it for membership in the church there. And then, of course, another practice on the Easter cantata music on Wednesday evening, immediately following the service. All of those who are here tonight who are involved in the Easter cantata, please go as quickly as possible at the close of this service to the Religious Education Building on the college campus at Baptist College so that we can begin practicing as quickly as we possibly can. Now I want to ask two people, if you would, to lead us as we pray, asking God's blessings on this service and on the activities of the week that are to follow. Unless Dario Innocencio, if he will begin our time of prayer, and then David Smith, if he will close it. And now we'll have our four angels, the ladies.